Alright, welcome to Fire Service Warrior video blog, episode number six. Uh, last week we talked about fitness, and, and I, I hope you're all hearing that message edge and working on it. Uh, fitness is the foundation of everything that we're able to do in the fire service. If we want to reduce risk to ourselves and improve our chances of going home, we have to be physically fit. Today what we're going to talk about is that sixth point on our ethos statement. Fire service warriors wear seatbelts, helmet straps, SCBA, and all PPE. Why do we make that point? Well, here's the thing. I don't believe that aggressive operations and safe operations are mutually exclusive. Okay? We need to be prepared to operate aggressively if we're going to commit to an interior firefighting operation. We can't be timid in those circumstances. So what we have to do is do everything that we can in the safest way possible to minimize risk, obtain a degree of relative safety, and still aggressively attack the fire and get it put out. We gotta start by getting there, right? Statistics have shown time and time again that we injure firefighters during the response and return phase, okay? In 2008, we suffered 28 firefighter line of duty deaths in vehicle accidents. In 2009, that number dropped to 16. So we went from roughly 25% of our fatalities down to 17%. In 2010, we dropped it to 11 line of duty deaths. Only 12%, a 50, over a 50% reduction in two years. That piece of cultural change seems to be working. We're not playing fast and loose with our driving anymore. We're paying attention to those factors. And that's critical. Because we've got to get there and we've got to get back. Wearing seat belts, slowing down a little bit during the response, are all things that we can directly control that are going to reduce those line of duty death numbers. When we look at helmet straps, some folks don't like to wear it. They absolutely despise it. The reality is, though, the helmet doesn't work properly without us wearing a strap, right? We've all experienced losing that helmet in a fire building, I'm willing to bet. If you lose your helmet in a fire building, if it falls off your head, it's because you weren't wearing your helmet strap. The key to getting folks to wear straps and using them consistently is practicing with them. Making it a no-tolerance policy, like many departments have, you will wear your helmet strap. I'll be honest, I wear mine on every fire I'm on. I put my helmet on in such a way that it doesn't become an encumbrance. I know how to use it, and by drilling with it and using it constantly, what was once bothersome is now comfortable for me. Our experience with it leads to our comfort level in using it. Now we come to probably the two big ones, in my opinion, SCBA and the rest of our PPE. You would think that in this day and age, it's 2011, kids, that wearing your SCBA would be the default setting for firefighters all over the place. It's not. We still can, we can go on YouTube any day of the week and see firefighters that aren't wearing their SCBA, aren't using that critical life-saving tool that we have. Fires these days, I don't care how old the building is, it is filled with combustible furnishing that's been made out of plastics, out of synthetic materials, out of foams, all of these things that are essentially solid state gasoline. When they light on fire, they are releasing tons of toxic materials. The two that we know the most about are carbon monoxide and hydrogen cyanide, right? Those toxic twins that we hear about all the time. They're killers. They may not kill us at this fire today, but they're going to kill us eventually. We see the increase in rates of occupational cancer every year. Occupational cancer, more often than not, is because of the products that we're breathing and we're exposed to. We have to understand it's not just that inhalation route of exposure that we're exposed to these products from. It's also absorption, right? We wear our gear and we're, we've got our gear on, which is all well and good, but these products are still able to seep in around our skin. And the more exposed skin surface we have, the more area we give it to get in couple of things when we think about eliminating some of those risks, reducing those risk factors from those toxic products of combustion. Keeping our gear clean, okay? It helps. It's important. Another thing is wearing all of our PPE, right? 
You may not like wearing your hood. You may find it uncomfortable. The reality is that hood is there to help save your life. For those folks out there that will say, I can't maintain proper orientation in the building. I don't know what the fire conditions are with my hood on. I'm throwing a flag on a play. That means you haven't drilled with your hood. That means you don't understand the environment you're operating in. Okay? I have certainly gone and taught a full day's worth of evolutions in a burn tower where I wound up with burnt ears, even through a hood, because you spend an entire day in an oven. But if you're coming out of a structure fire after one or two bottles and your face is all redded up and burnt up, it's because you're allowing yourself to be exposed to these horribly toxic products of combustion. Okay? Carbon monoxide is dangerous through absorption. You can elevate your CO risk. You can absorb hydrogen cyanide through your skin. Wear your gloves, wear your hood, wear your helmet, wear your gear. You're going into a high threat environment. Do what you can to minimize those risks. All right? We have to figure out through training what is a tenable and an untenable place. And we also have to understand that not wearing our gear does not make the environment more tenable. It simply means that we're going to be injured worse or have to bail out at a critical moment. We need to be ready for that. So what do we have to do? We have to check one another. We have to take care of our brothers and sisters. So that means I check my partner before we go in to make sure he or she has his hood up, that the gloves are on, that the helmet strap's on, that we're using our SCBA. When we get done getting the knock on the fire and we think we've got some lift and folks want to start dumping that pack right away and getting rid of it, we say, hey, there's still unburned products of combustion in here. The CO level's still up. There's still hydrogen cyanide, right? We know that once that fire is knocked out, and the combustion isn't consuming those products anymore, it's even more dangerous. We have to wear those SCBA during overhaul. So that means we have to give our people breaks. We have to look out for one another. All of those things are a part of creating a relatively safe environment so that we can do our job as fire service warriors. That's what it's all about. Today's kind of a quick hit. The, the, I, I, I'm not going to belabor a lot of these points because they're very straightforward and they're very simple. Wear your seatbelt, wear your helmet strap, wear your SCBA, wear your hood, wear your gloves, use your gear, wear eye protection if you're pulling ceiling and don't have your mask on. Do what it takes to go home safe. As long as you don't shirk your duty. So that's it. This is a quick hit this week. I hope you guys are learning something. I hope everybody's enjoying it. I'm getting a lot of feedback, and I really appreciate all of that. Um, good things are coming from uh, the, both the website and some of the teaching components. Um, if you guys are interested in booking any of the classes, by all means, visit uh, www.spartan-concepts.com. That's uh, the training company where we offer up all of our training classes. We're, we're actually rolling out a new program pretty quick here in the spring. Um, things are... Uh, Things are available if you're interested in getting us to come out. Um, my book, The Combat Position, is due out from Penwell Publications in uh, the next about six, eight weeks. Um, we'll have some advanced copies at FDIC for folks to look at, and you will be able to order at FDIC. Uh, I've got a big blog post coming up on Monday talking about the book, and you'll actually get to see the cover on Monday if you'll read the blog. So um, check out the blog, fireservicewarrior.com. Check out the training site, spartan-concepts.com. And... Uh, have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. Cheers.